Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the gastrointestinal signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease, along with the extra intestinal manifestations of Crohn's disease. And we're also gonna talk about nutrient deficiencies that are associated with Crohn's disease. So this is going to be a long lesson. But first, before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what Crohn's disease is. Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, that can affect any part of the gastrointestinal system. So if we look at the gastrointestinal system here, just briefly, here is the esophagus, here is the stomach, and it leads into the small intestines, which wind around in the abdomen, eventually leading to the large intestine. Here is the ascending colon or ascending large intestine. Here is the transverse colon. Here is the descending colon, and here is the sigmoid colon. So that is a brief description of the gastrointestinal system. And the reason I bring this up is because Crohn's disease can affect any part of the gastrointestinal system, anywhere from the mouth to the perianal region. But what we do see is that the ileum or ileum, which is the last part of the small intestine, so the part that joins to the large intestine, and the ascending colon, which is this part here, are the most commonly affected portions of the gastrointestinal system in Crohn's disease. And some other parts of the large intestine can also be affected as well, including the transverse colon and the descending colon. But again, any part of the gastrointestinal system can be affected in Crohn's disease. Now, Crohn's disease is just one type of inflammatory bowel disease. Ulcerative colitis is the other type or the other form of inflammatory bowel disease. But with ulcerative colitis, only the large intestine is affected and they have different clinical presentations. We're not going to talk much about ulcerative colitis in this lesson. This lesson is specifically on Crohn's disease. What is the epidemiology of Crohn's disease? Crohn's disease is more prevalent in European and Ashkenazi Jew populations, and there is a higher risk of Crohn's disease in smokers, and alternatively, there's actually a decreased risk of ulcerative colitis with smoking. So there is a difference here with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And there is an onset of Crohn's disease in two particular age groups. One is prior to the age of 30, and there's another smaller prevalence increase around the age of 60. And the topic of this lesson is that there are a wide variety of signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease with an onset of these signs and symptoms that is often subtle and insidious. So they subtly occur over longer periods of time. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease. The first one is abdominal pain. So there is recurrent episodes of abdominal pain that often occur after eating or drinking, which we refer to as postprandial. And the abdominal pain may be diffuse, but it's often located in the right lower quadrant. So when we look at the patient directly on, here's the right side, here's the left side, and here is the right lower quadrant. And this is where the ileum meets the large intestine. This is the terminal ileum. This is a very common area where Crohn's disease affects. And the abdominal pain in Crohn's disease is described as a cramping pain. Another significant symptom of Crohn's disease is diarrhea. More specifically, watery diarrhea. Now, bloody diarrhea can happen in Crohn's disease, but it is uncommon. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, it is more common. So this is a difference in clinical presentation between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease, more watery diarrhea, and ulcerative colitis, more bloody diarrhea. And the diarrhea in Crohn's disease often contains mucus. Some other signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease include flatulence. So the reason there's flatulence and the reason that there is diarrhea is because inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract reduces the ability to absorb nutrients. So these undigested and unabsorbed nutrients get metabolized by bacteria, producing gas. And Subsequently, those undigested and unabsorbed nutrients also lead to an influx of water into the large intestine, causing diarrhea. So this is the reason. There is difficulty with digestion and absorption of nutrients. And this goes along with bloating. So again, due to bacterial digestion of unabsorbed nutrients. We can also see perianal skin tags. Now this is a very important sign of Crohn's disease. Majority of Crohn's disease patients have perianal skin tags, roughly 75% of patients. These are painless, and they are also associated with hemorrhoids and anal fissure disease. So having a perianal skin tag doesn't necessarily mean you have Crohn's disease, but a significant number of Crohn's disease patients have perianal skin tags. Another significant clinical finding in Crohn's disease patients is oral ulcers. So these oral ulcers are also known as aphthous ulcers, so they're like canker sores. 
nearly half of patients with Crohn's disease will develop these oral ulcers at some point in their life. Another finding in Crohn's disease patients is a feeling or sensation of an abdominal mass. So this can be a palpable mass, which means it can be felt, and it's present in roughly a quarter of Crohn's disease patients. And it's most commonly located in the right lower quadrant. So this is due to inflammatory changes in that area. Fistulas can also occur in Crohn's disease patients. A fistula is a tunneling connecting one epithelialized surface to another, and they are due to chronic inflammation. There are other things that can cause fistulas, but Crohn's disease is a significant cause. And these fistulas can form in many different places. They can form between the bowel and the skin, which we call introcutaneous. They can form between the bowel and the bladder, which we call introvesicular. They can form between the bowel and the vagina, which we call introvaginal, and they can form in the perianal region. So again, these are tunnels that connect the bowel, which is undergoing chronic inflammation in Crohn's disease, to other epithelialized surfaces. So this can be significant complications of Crohn's disease. We can also see weight loss occurring in Crohn's disease patients. This is due to inflammation throughout the gastrointestinal tract, causing malabsorption or decreased absorption. And it's ultimately due to multiple nutrient deficiencies. We're going to talk about those nutrient deficiencies later on in this lesson. We can also see nausea and vomiting occurring in Crohn's disease patients. Nausea and vomiting are caused by intestinal inflammation and other structural changes. So due to that chronic inflammatory state of Crohn's disease, there can be structural changes within the gastrointestinal system. So the wall of the small intestine can thicken, there can be formation of strictures, and this can ultimately lead to obstruction in some cases. So the wall thickening and strictures that are caused by that chronic inflammatory state can lead to a small bowel obstruction which can present with nausea and vomiting. And because Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory state, we can see fever occurring in Crohn's disease. Again, this is due to inflammation within the gastrointestinal tract. And oftentimes it's a mild fever. And this is more when there's a flare or an active disease. And due to the chronic inflammatory state, especially during active disease, there can be fatigue. So feeling tired, this is actually a very common symptom of Crohn's disease. And as I mentioned before, it's due to the chronic inflammatory state, but also due to malnutrition and then associated anemia. Now there's some important skin findings in Crohn's disease. So these are the extra intestinal manifestations. One of them is pyoderma gangrenosum. So this is what pyoderma gangrenosum looks like. It may occur in up to 10% of Crohn's disease patients. So it can affect a large number of Crohn's disease patients. And the cause of this is unknown. We can also see erythema nodosum in Crohn's disease patients as well. These are red nodules or lumps that are tender to touch and they're present on the legs, most often on the shins or the front of the legs. And they are caused by inflamed fat cells underneath the skin. So again, these are two skin findings in Crohn's disease patients, pyoderma gangrenosum and erythema nodosum. Arthritis is another finding in Crohn's disease patients and it affects a large number of Crohn's disease patients. Approximately one in five Crohn's disease patients have issues with arthritis. And the areas where arthritis affects oftentimes include the ankles, the knees, the hips, and the wrists. And then there's also ankylosing spondylitis, which is a condition that is associated with Crohn's disease patients. Approximately 1 in 10 Crohn's disease patients will suffer from ankylosing spondylitis. So if you want more information on ankylosing spondylitis, please check out my full lesson on that topic. Now there's some important findings in the eyes with Crohn's disease patients. Episcleritis is one of those findings. That is inflammation of the episcleral layer of the eye. And uveitis can also be found in Crohn's disease patients. That is an inflammation of the uvea of the eye. So both of these can present with red eye and in some cases difficulty with vision. Now, there are even more associated problems that can occur in Crohn's disease patients. One of them is cholelithiasis. And cholelithiasis is the condition of having gallstones. So Crohn's disease patients are at an increased risk of getting gallstones or developing gallstones. And because they're at an increased risk for having gallstones, they're at an increased risk for gallstone-associated issues, including cholecystitis, which is an inflammation of the gallbladder, and other gallbladder diseases like cholangitis. Now, each of these gallbladder diseases has their own clinical 
presentations in Signs and Symptoms. If you want more information on the signs and symptoms of each of these, please check out my full lesson on cholecystitis and other gallbladder diseases. And although I mentioned that Crohn's disease patients are at an increased risk for developing gallstones, one particular set of Crohn's disease patients are at a higher risk for developing gallstones, and those are the ones that have an affected ileum due to their disease. We can also see hepatosteatosis more likely in Crohn's disease as well. So hepatosteatosis is a condition of fat deposition in the liver or a fatty liver. Crohn's disease patients are at an increased risk of hepatosteatosis and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, which can present with gnawing right upper quadrant pain and an increased risk for cirrhosis later on in life. Now, Crohn's disease patients are also at an increased risk for kidney stones. So kidney stones is also known as a condition of nephrolithiasis. And with kidney stones, they may experience renal colic, which is flank pain that radiates to the groin. So again, flank pain radiating to the groin, hematuria, dysuria. So hematuria is blood in the urine. Dysuria is a burning sensation when urinating, and they can also have some nausea and vomiting as well. And then Crohn's disease patients are also at an increased risk for urinary tract infections. So Again, increased risk of urinary tract infections in Crohn's disease patients. With urinary tract infections, there's going to be urgency, so a feeling that you need to use the washer very quickly. There's an increased frequency of urination with urinary tract infections, and then there's dysuria, that burning sensation when urinating. And this may be due to entrovesicular fistulas, which are fistulas that connect part of the gastrointestinal system to the bladder. So bacteria from the gastrointestinal tract can enter into the bladder, increasing the risk of urinary tract infections. Now, a very significant risk in Crohn's disease patients is thrombotic risk. So thrombotic risk is an increased risk of clotting. So it has been recognized that there is an increased risk of clotting in Crohn's disease. And Crohn's disease patients have a three to four fold higher risk of developing clots than patients without inflammatory bowel disease. And this thrombotic risk increases mortality risk. So with regards to the formation of clots, there can be thromboembolism that occurs. Pulmonary embolism is one finding. So that's where a clot forms in a vein and travels to the lungs, causing pulmonary embolism. And then there can be ischemic stroke that can occur as well. A clot can form and that clot can go to the brain and cause a stroke. So these are two major consequences of this thrombotic risk that carry high mortality risk. And now we can talk about the nutrient deficiencies that occur in Crohn's disease patients along with associated symptoms. Now there is a malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins in Crohn's disease. These vitamins are vitamins A, D, E, and K. Those are the fat soluble vitamins. The reason that there is malabsorption of these fat soluble vitamins is because there's inflammation oftentimes in the terminal ileum in Crohn's disease patients. So if there is inflammation in this area near the terminal ileum or the terminal ileum, this is where fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed. So if there's inflammation there, they're going to have difficulty being absorbed. So with regards to deficiencies of these vitamins, vitamin A deficiency can cause reduced night vision. Vitamin D deficiency can lead to fatigue, depression, and later risk of osteoporosis. Vitamin E deficiency can lead to reduced peripheral sensation and muscle weakness. And vitamin K deficiency can lead to an increased bleeding risk. So Crohn's disease patients may have deficiencies in some or all of these vitamins, but we might not see all the clinical features of each of these types of deficiencies. For instance, vitamin E deficiency might not necessarily present with these signs and symptoms in Crohn's disease. And then vitamin K deficiency, there can be increased bleeding risk, but there's also this increased clotting risk in Crohn's disease. So there can be some opposite issues going on at the same time. Now, there are other deficiencies and associated symptoms as well. One of these is vitamin B12 deficiency. The reason is, is because vitamin B12 is absorbed at the terminal ileum as well. There can be folate deficiency, which is absorbed at the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. There can be iron deficiency, which is also absorbed at the duodenum. And with all three of these, vitamin B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, and iron deficiency, this can lead to anemia. So anemia can occur from all of these types of deficiencies. So even one of these deficiencies can lead to a type of anemia. And then there can be even more deficiencies in Crohn's disease patients. Some of these include selenium, zinc, and vitamin B1 deficiencies. So again, as you can see, there's a lot of different deficiencies. Vitamin B12 deficiency can lead to macrocytic anemia, depression and fatigue symptoms, 
and some other neurological symptoms. Folate deficiency can also lead to a macrocytic anemia. Iron deficiency can lead to a microcytic anemia, where the cells are smaller in, in size. And all of these, because they can lead to anemia, anemia symptoms include fatigue, pallor, shortness of breath, and chest pain in some severe cases. And then some of these other deficiencies, selenium, zinc, vitamin B1, these can all have other types of signs and symptoms that can occur as well. Please check out my lessons on these topics if you want more information on those signs and symptoms. So if you want more information on Crohn's disease and inflammatory bowel disease, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.